In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, Amen. That question asked of St. John the Baptist, Who art thou? Who are you? is one that we might wish to prayfully reflect upon in our own lives. John's own answer, not so much concerned the natural order, but rather the supernatural order. He could have said that he was a prophet, because on a certain level, that's exactly what he was. But then, as our Lord said, John was more than a prophet. Unlike those prophets before him, he wasn't announcing something or someone that was yet to come, but rather the presence of a person who actually stood in the people's midst. In this regard, with John, all prophecy concerning the Messiah came to an end. He could also have said that he was a preacher, which again would have been true. He was a preacher par excellence, not just by virtue of his words, but also by his striking example. But instead, he gave a description of himself which demonstrated at one and the same time not only his human limitations, but also his supernatural greatness. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. This question, who are you, gives us an opportunity to consider what St. Ignatius refers to as the very foundation and first principle of all things. In a few words, we too can describe ourselves, and like St. John the Baptist, we can indicate that we are nothing, and that all our real greatness comes from God. But we can say, I am one of God's creatures. Yes, we are God's creatures. To create means to bring into being out of nothing. And only God can do that. We can manipulate pre-existing matter to make this or that thing, but only God can create out of nothing. As creatures of God, we are nothing, and God is everything in us. For as we read in the Acts of the Apostles, in him we live and move and have our being. It's from God that we receive our body, our soul, our senses, our intellect. And not only have we received them, speaking in the past tense, but in a certain sense we continue to receive them. For if God withdrew his presence from us for just one brief moment, we would simply cease to exist. And consequently, we depend on God as a voice depends on the one who pronounces the words, or as a river depends on the spring, which is its source. But of course, we're not just any creatures. We are creatures upon which God has poured out his love in a particularly special way. There are some things we possess which are not possessed by other material creatures. And I'm speaking, of course, of our intellect and will. It's our intellect and will our ability to think, consider, make informed choices, which means that we're made in God's image. Other creatures possess only a vague similarity to God with respect to, his, um, with his respect to some of his perfections. And then, of course, we receive sanctifying grace at baptism. Sanctifying grace takes us beyond a mere image of God it makes us his adopted son or daughter. And so, like St. John the Baptist, we are on the one hand nothing, but on the other hand, we have a tremendous greatness about us. We're the object of God's special love and are united to him with spiritual bonds so close that they even far surpass the natural bonds that exist between parents and their children. Now, there's a consequence to all of this, and something which we should never forget. In human relationships, there is a moral bond between the people concerned, 
be it between parents and children, between bosses and their workers, or between benefactors and those to whom they give. But when it comes to us mere creatures who receive all from God who creates and sustains us, this is even more the case. To put it succinctly, we are bound by our Creator, for without Him we wouldn't even exist. It's true that we are created with free will, which we are able to use or abuse to our benefit or detriment. Well, the bottom line is that we are the property of God. He is our Lord and King. How silly it would be to prefer our own will to his. When we consider our origins and the foundations of our ongoing existence, it does not take much to reflection to, to recognize that we must, to the best of our frail and limited human ability, do what God wills. Sir Ignatius sums up the end of humanity in three actions. To praise, to revere, and to serve God. And that's what we're all called to do. To praise and worship him for our daily prayers, our devotions, our mass going. In filial love, to show reverence to him and his holy will through shunning sin and choosing to walk the difficult, narrow and rocky path which leads to heaven. And to serve him by doing it to the best of our ability, our, fulfilling our, our duties. This is what it means to do God's will. And doing God's will should be the guiding principle of our lives. This before anything else. There are many options open to us in life, many choices to make and different possibilities in terms of who we have as friends, who we marry, what jobs and professions we enter. We enter. In all these, and indeed in everything else, we should serve God to the best of our ability. It is of course true that we have a mission in life with regards to our neighbor, our spouses, children, our parents, friends, acquaintances, and the suffering. But first, we have a much more important mission with regard to God. During the season of Advent, we look forward not just to the coming of Christ into this world as a baby in that stable in Bethlehem, but also beyond to his second coming at the end of time, to that last day, when collectively each of us will be called to account for the lives that we've lived. On that day, the question will be asked, who are you? Did you fulfill the end and purpose of your life? On this Gaudete Sunday, the church encourages us with gladness in the middle of this period of preparation and penance, while reminding us that now is the time for fervent prayer and for imploring Jesus to remain with us through his mercy. Let us prepare the way for his arrival by repentance for our sins and by a, a worthy reception of the sacrament of penance, confession, and Holy Communion, so that strengthened by his grace, on that last day, we might be able to answer in humility and simplicity, I am your creature, and during my life I was aware that I am nothing and that you are all in me. Therefore, I did not seek anything for myself, but everything for you, even in my most mundane and ordinary daily tasks. May God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat>